Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the righteous. Oh, he's the one that has saved us, redeemed us. Oh, glory to God. He called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light for the purpose of showing forth the praises of him. Oh, if he's ever done anything worthy of praise for you, has he ever bought you out of anything? Have he ever answered your prayers? Oh, have he ever forgiven you, delivered you, set you free? Then you owe him thanks. Then you owe him praise. If we've received any benefit from the Lord, any good from him, then we owe him thanksgiving and we owe him praise. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Amen. Let, let us give thanks in everything. Why? For this is the will of God concerning you. Amen. Glory to God. So when you return thanksgiving to him, glory to God, you've entered into the will of God concerning you. Oh, glory be to God. If he can just keep us in his will. Amen. He can create an environment. Amen. That he's attracted to. That makes it easy for him to do his works and hard for the devil to interfere. Oh, glory be to God. I'm telling you, when you offer up to the Lord thanksgiving and praise, amen, you create an environment that the Holy Spirit is attracted to. Oh, glory to God. He'll respond to you suddenly, immediately. Glory to God. You'll uh, uh, access his attention and intervention in your affairs, and you'll find solutions and answers to all your concern. All the Lord is requiring you to do is to give him thanks and to give him praise for all that he's done in and through and for you. Oh, glory be to God. Well, praise the Lord. I trust that you're off to a breakthrough testimony week. Amen. That the Lord is increasing you more and more, you and your children, in 2024. Amen. Psalms 115, verse 14. Amen. That's what we are standing on at the ministry. Oh, glory to God. He's given us a word for this year, for this season. He wants to increase us more and more, us and our children. Amen. He wants to enlarge us. Oh, he wants to expand us. Oh, he wants to grow us and to make us better. Amen. In faith, in love, in wisdom, in grace, and in our hunger and thirst for his word. Oh, if he can just grow you in those things, increase you in those things. Oh, glory to God. You'll find him actively at work in your life. Amen. The Bible says in first Corinthians chapter one, I'm sorry, chapter three, amen. Verse 89, it says one planet, one water, but God gives the increase. Amen. Glory be to God. Well, this is our, amen, corporate fasting and prayer day every Tuesday. Amen. Glory to God. The ministry at Abundant Life Christian Center. Amen. We hook on, amen, to our corporate fasting and prayer time. Amen. You know, corporate fasting and prayer is a service unto the Lord. It's a service that he requires from his people. Amen. And see if we'll offer un unto him what he requires. Amen. Then he'll offer to us what we require. Amen. Glory to God. I'm all the time thinking about what can I offer to him? Mm. What does he require of me? Glory to God. If I'll give him what he requires of me. Amen. Then I won't have any problem receiving what I require of him. Mm. Glory to God. See, God always requires you to make the first move. In Matthew 6, verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. And then he move after you move. Amen. 
Glory to God. He'll add things to you. Amen. Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaken together and run it over shall men give into your bosom. Amen. See, he always require you to move first. Amen. Look at Jesus in Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavenly laid, and I'll give you rest. Can you see that? Amen. Take my yoke upon you. Come learn of me. Learn how I clobbered sickness, disease. Learn how I overcame sin and worry and fear. Woo, glory. Come learn of me. Woo, woo, woo. And you'll find rest for your soul. Glory be to God. Amen. See, we all the time waiting on him and he waiting on us. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Well, Amen. Uh, I want you to go ahead and get your Bibles, get your pen and a notepad. So as we refer to scripture, you can write these scripture references down. And in days to come, you can go back over them, strengthen and build up your faith, fortify your faith and starve and drive out all your doubts. Amen. Glory to God. We want to appreciate, amen, all of our members and ministers and leaders at the ministry. Amen. We so appreciate you. Amen. Your love. Amen. Your service, your contribution. Amen. Glory to God. Your support and supply of the spirit. Amen. May the same good that you make happen for others be received by you from the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord increase you more and more you and your children. Amen. We also want to appreciate all of our Facebook partners and friends all around the world. Amen. We we thank God for you. We pray for you. Amen. Glory to God. We're standing with you. Amen. We're partners together in this endeavor. Amen. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I want to encourage you also to reach out to a, a Facebook partner, a friend, a co-labor, a neighbor, a loved one, a relative, amen, and uh, get them hooked on to this word supply. Glory to God, because whatever you help others receive, that's what the Lord commits to help you to receive. Mm. Glory to God. I often say, the devil can never make me sick. Amen. Why do you say that, Pastor Mike? Because I'm all the time ministering healing to others. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, in Ephesians 6, verse 8, whatsoever good thing that any man doeth, the same, the same, the same shall you receive of the Lord. So if you're all the time ministering to the sick, you're receiving that same thing you're ministering to them from the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. Amen. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Amen. That's how Job collected his healing. See, when he was praying for himself, amen, he was getting relief. But he didn't get, amen, healed. He didn't get his healing, his breakthrough, Amen. His freedom until he started praying for his friends. Oh, glory to God. When the Holy Spirit directed him to start praying for his friends in Job 42, verse 7 through 10, the Bible says when Job prayed for his friend, the Lord restored him tenfold. Glory to God. Amen. See, we got to understand that God is a God of order. Amen. I said he's a God of order. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians 14. Amen. Verse 40. It says, whatever you do, do decent and in order. God is a God of order. Amen. Amen. And what is order? It's the proper placement, the arrangement of things. Amen. To accomplish the result. Mm. It's the reason why God put light here before he put everything else. Amen. Because light sustains everything else. He's a God of order. Amen. Look at how he orchestrated and put in order the, 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 the organs in your body. Mm. I mean, properly orchestrated, Whew. properly placed. Amen. 
for the for the fulfillment, for the accomplishment of the goal. Woo, glory to God. So prayer, amen, has to be in order. In order for God to attend and intervene in our affairs, our prayers have to be properly placed. Woo, they have to be in order. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So the order of God, amen, when we pray, amen, is to pray proactively. Amen. And then lesser prayer, reactive. Mm. See, most of Christians' prayers are reactive prayers. Mm. They react. Mm. But God wants our prayers to be proactive. Woo, go to prevent things. Glory to God. Oh, man, this is the Holy Ghost already, y'all. Man, praise God. Amen. See, the Lord taught me. He said, son, I'm going to teach you how to pray. He said, many of my people, uh, they assume that they know how to pray. He said, but prayer is something that had to be taught and it's something that had to be caught. I never heard that before. Prayer has to be taught and caught. Mm. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so the Lord in Luke chapter 11, verse, verse 1 and 2, the disciples came to Jesus because they saw that he got results when he prayed. Amen. And, and, and they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Mm. Teach us how to pray. Amen. See, they, they wanted to pray and get results. And they knew Jesus knew how to pray and get results. Amen. So they said, Lord, teach us how to pray and get results. Amen. Glory to God. So I asked the Lord, Lord, teach me how to pray and get results. And he taught me, I ain't never heard this talk. Proactive and reactive. Mm. And he said, proactive, amen, is to prevent things from happening. Amen. And reactive is to respond to the things that have have, have happened. Mm. So you can get it dealt with, amen, in the preventative and in the reactive. Amen. But the highest type of prayer is proactive, preventing things from happening. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. And see, in order to pray effectively, Amen. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit. You have to allow the Holy Spirit, amen, to show you how to pray. Mm. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. For we know not what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself helpeth our infirmities. Amen. See, an infirmity, a weakness, is not knowing how to pray. So Jesus knew that we would be, amen, challenged with prayer and not knowing how to pray. So he sent us the Holy Spirit to help us to pray mm, effectively. Whew. And I don't believe, amen, Christians acknowledge the Holy Spirit in prayer. Amen. You know, before I pray, amen, I always acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Bible says that Jesus sent you to help me to pray. He said, I don't know how to pray effectively without your aid and assistance. So I implore you today. Woo, I receive your help today to help me pray. Amen. Orderly in accordance to the will of God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. If you'll begin to do that, I guarantee you, you'll start getting results in your prayer. If you'll just acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Jesus sent you to help me to pray. Mm. I receive your help. I receive your assistance. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he'll be delighted to help you. Because that's what Jesus sent him to do, to help you to pray effectively. Jesus, I'm telling you, he wants all your prayers answered. Amen. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 17, every good gift cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no vabbiness, neither shadow of turning. Amen. 
And then he goes on to say in Matthew chapter 7, amen, verse 11, if you being, amen, a natural parent, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give good things to those who ask? Amen. In Luke 17, verse 21, the Bible said, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Mm. Man, praise God. Amen. So we just had to let the Holy Spirit to help us to pray. Amen. Glory to God. Now, now, since I'm in this right here, amen, uh, you know, it's just, it's just in my spirit today to teach a little bit on prayer, amen, and how to get results. Prayer and how to get results. First of all, I want to bring your attention, amen, to the fact, amen, that Jesus wants you to get results when you pray. Amen. Look at what he said in John 16, verse 23. St. John 16, verse 23. You got to understand how committed Jesus is to help you get results when you pray. Amen. He wants your prayers answered more than you do. Glory to God. Watch this. Notice in verse 23. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Up until now, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask that you might receive so that your joy should be made full. It gives God the Father great joy when he get to answer our prayer. It validates, solidifies, and confirms the Lordship of Jesus Christ over us when he get to answer your prayer. Mm. Glory to God. So you have to ask the Holy Spirit, help me to pray effectively, and he'll help you. I said he'll help you because that's what Jesus assigned him to do is to help you get answers to your prayers. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at the two types of prayer, proactive and reactive. Mm. See, proactive, amen, prevents things from happening. Mm. Reactive praying is to respond to the things that have happened. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Whether I'm preventing it or reacting, I can deal with it in prayer. God has subjected it to me praying. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Now, what is prayer? What is prayer? Write this down. Prayer is acknowledging God. Amen. And his love and ability and willingness to help you. Mm. See, you acknowledging God. Who is God? He love. First John chapter four, verse, verse seven and eight. God is love. That means he's committed to your good. Mm. In your situation, your past, your enemies, nobody can uncommit him. Mm. Not even your sin. Amen. Romans 5 verse 8 says, while we were yet sinners, God commended his love towards us. Woo, glory to God. Nothing, nothing can mess up God's love for you. But God's love can mess up whatever the devil doing to you. Woo, glory to God. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. So prayer is acknowledging God, acknowledging how he loved you in Christ on the cross. Romans 8, verse 31 and 32. If God be for you, who can be against you? How do I know he's for me? Verse 32, he that did not withhold his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also do what? Freely give us everything. Woo, if God didn't withhold Jesus from us while we were in sin, what make you think he gonna withhold a mortgage payment, a car note? a healing, a breakthrough. 
Ooh, glory be to God. He would have kept Jesus before he keep all that. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, just say it with me. God is for me. Come on, say it out loud. God is for me. Mm. God is for me. Whew. My father loves me. Glory to God. Amen. See, prayer is acknowledging God. It's acknowledging how he loved you in Christ on the cross. Now, once you get a good picture of that through the scriptures and the Holy Ghost, now you're ready to ask him for what he promised. Amen. See, prayer is acknowledging God. Amen. And his ability and willingness to help you. Amen. You got to acknowledge it. You got to get that settled. He has the ability to help you and he's willing to help you. Woo, glory to God. Amen. And see, once you get that settled, you ready to pray. Amen. I said you ready to pray. Glory to God. Look what Jesus said. Amen. In, in, in John 16. Amen. Notice what he said in, in verse 27. For the Father himself loveth you because you love me and have believed that I came from God. He said, God love you just like he loved me. Oh, look at John 17. Look at verse, verse 20, 26. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them. Mm. The same kind of love that, that God loved Jesus with. It's in you. If you're born again, if you're saved, Romans 5 verse 5 said the love of God it is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. See, when God put this love of, of Jesus, this love of God in you, amen, it, 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 this love in you, I said this, this love in you, mm, make him present, make him for you. Mm. Glory to God. Now, I don't know about you, but this is helping my faith. Amen. I said this is helping my faith. Glory to God. See, because of Galatians 5, 6 says, faith works by love. See, the reason why people faith don't work because ain't no love in it. They, 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 they don't have a picture of how God loved them in Christ because how God loved you in Christ on that cross made him for you. Mm. He for you. He wills your good. Whew. Glory to God. And that's what Jesus was trying to help them to see. Look, God for you. He wills your good. He loves you just like he loved me. Mm. Lord, he just as committed to you as he is to me. Woo. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, man, the spirit of God coming in here now. Mm. He was already here, but boy, he's strong now. Who glory to God. Amen. Now, 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 watch this. Prayer is acknowledging God. Amen. Acknowledging how he loved you in Christ on the cross. Amen. When he took your sins away. Amen. When he, when he defeated death, hell, and the grave, he clobbered sickness, disease, worry, fear. See, see, I love did all that. His love for you did. He took care of all that. Woo! Colossians 2.14. Amen. Everything that was arrayed against us. Woo! Everything that was accusing us. Everything that was mocking us. Everything, amen, glory to God, that was hindering us. Everything that had laid siege upon us. Jesus nailed it to the cross. Woo! He nailed it to the cross. His love nailed it to the cross. Woo, what was he saying? I don't want nothing having you but me. Mm. Glory be to God. Woo, I'm jealous with you. Woo, glory to God. And see, that's what he was on a mission to do, to espouse them, to marry them to God, to the Father. And that's what Jesus, amen, it has assigned us to do, is to marry you to him. Mm. Most people dating Jesus. They ain't married to him. 
Mm. Woo, glory to God. Jesus ain't looking for no date. <laughs> He's looking for a spouse. Woo so he can care for love. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo, man, the Holy Ghost coming up on me now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look that with me. Second, second, uh, second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Let's pick it up in uh, chapter 13. Second Corinthians 13. Amen. Glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Well, yeah, yeah, 2 Corinthians uh, 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 11, 2 Corinthians 11. Notice here, verse 1 and 2. Would to God, amen, bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you. Hear Jesus saying that. I'm jealous over you with godly jealous. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Jesus don't want nothing having you but him. Mm. Woo! Glory. Amen. Remember in Luke 15 when he had a hundred sheep, one of them decided to wander off and amen and get lost. What did he do? He left the 99. To go after that one. Whew. Glory to God. Jesus ain't interested in you losing nothing. Glory to God. Quit accepting defeat. Amen. Quit accepting loss. Jesus don't even accept loss. Jesus don't even accept failure. Jesus don't even accept defeat. Hmm. See, if you accept in failure, accept in defeat, accept in loss, you, you, you're not in love. Amen. You ain't continuing in love because ain't no failure, ain't no defeat, ain't no loss in love. Mm. Love redeems and restores what appears to be loss. Whew. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> So prayer is acknowledging God and how he loved you in Christ on the cross and his ability and willingness to help you. Amen. He has the ability to help you. Jeremiah 32, 17. What does it say? It says, thou Lord God, you made the heaven, you made the earth by your great power and there is nothing too hard for thee. Nothing. Whew. He has the power to save, the power to forgive, the power to heal, the power to deliver, the power to set free. And then in, in, in Deuteronomy 8, 18, the Bible says, amen, but you shall remember that it is the Lord thou God who giveth thee power to get well. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. See, he done something with that power. What did he do? He gave it to us. He gave it to us. And then in Ephesians, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he said, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent scorpion over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, in his ability to do something for you. Be strong in that. So prayer is acknowledging God, how he loved me on the cross in Christ, amen, and his ability and willingness to help me. Now, he has the ability to help me, but will he use his ability? Will he use his power on my behalf? Well, let's go to the scriptures and see. Look there with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, amen, verse, verse 12. Luke 5, verse 12. This was a leopard man. He had this leprosy, this incurable disease. Look at verse 12. And it came to pass, and when Jesus was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou will, you can make me whole. 
See, he knew that Jesus could. He had the ability to do it. But what he did not know would will Jesus use his ability, his power on my behalf. See, he didn't know his willingness. He knew his ability, but didn't know his willingness. Mm. See, faith cannot rest upon power or ability alone. Mm. Glory to God. See, faith rests upon, will you use your power on my behalf? That's where your faith going to come in when you see what he willing to do with his power. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. See, the leper knew that Jesus could heal him, but he didn't know if Jesus would heal him. Now watch how Jesus responds. Verse 13, and he, and he put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Mm. See, a lot of Christians still sick, still defeated. Because they, they, they faith is resting in his power. Amen. And not in his willingness to use it on their behalf. Mm, 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 mm. Boy, that's gangster teaching right there. Well, Jesus just did that for the leper. said, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hebrews 13, look at verse 8. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory be to God. So if he was willing to heal, use his power to heal this leper yesterday, amen, he's still willing it to use his power on our behalf today. Mm, mm, mm. Glory be to God. It sounds like Campbell's soup. You know that Campbell soup? Mm, mm, good. Woo, glory to God. Amen. So we have to exercise faith in his willingness to use his power on our behalf. Faith cannot rest or resonate upon ability alone. Amen. If that's the case, everybody will be healed. Everybody will be saved. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Faith must siege and must rest upon, upon God's willingness to use his power on your behalf. Mm. Amen. Glory to God. Now watch this. Because we're still talking about prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now, God's willingness is revealed in three areas. Number one, his love. Woo, glory to God. Number two, amen, his spirit. Woo, glory to God. And number three, his word. Amen. Glory to God. That's where you find God's will, what he's willing to do in his love, in his spirit, and in his word. Matthew 26, 53. It said the spirit, 41, I'm sorry. Matthew 26, 41. It said the spirit is willing. The spirit is always willing. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Now, let's talk about prayer. Prayer is acknowledging God. How he loved me in Christ on the cross. Mm. And his ability and willingness to help me. Mm. Look at Isaiah 41. Look at verse 10. Fear thou not. Why? Because I'm with you. Don't be dismayed. Why? Because I'm your God. Woo. What will you do? I will help you. I will strengthen you. And I will uphold you with my righteous right. See what he's willing to do? He's willing to use his strength on your behalf. He's willing to use his help on your behalf. He's willing to hold you up. He's willing to do it. Woo! So now you just exercise faith, confidence in his willingness to use his power, his strength, his help on your behalf. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Now, no, 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 watch this. We're there in Luke chapter 5. Watch this. Now, remember, 
In Romans 10, verse 17, it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Now notice here in Luke 5, let's pick it up in verse 15. See, you can't have faith in something Jesus ain't said or promised. Amen. Before you can have faith, you, you, you got to have a promise. You have to have Jesus saying something. Because mm. faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So no one can have, you can only assume when you haven't heard what Jesus said. Mm. That's why I always tell Christians, listen, before you pray for some, go find promises or prophecies that promise or speak to what you need. Mm. Then you can have faith and you're praying in the light and not in the night. Mm. Glory to God. Woo! See, we grew up, you know, and, and in this neighborhood, Providence, you know, in off of Nonesville Road, and we 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 had a. I often tell people, you know, we didn't we didn't have a bath. We had a path, you know, out to the outhouse in the back. A lot of y'all don't know nothing about that, but talk to your grandparents and your parents. They'll tell you. Amen. And our house had inadequate electricity and wiring. Amen. And, uh, and, and so, so uh, you know, we didn't have the light switch on, on the wall. We had a light in the middle of the ceiling. And then that strain that came down. So you had to pull, kind of like some of the lights in your attic used to be. You had to pull that strain, you see, and that light come on. Well, when it was dark, sometimes we'd come home and it'd be pitch dark in the house. You can't see nothing. And so our parents, you know, they used to have to feel for that, that strain. They, they had to feel for that strain. And when they felt that strain, they'd pull it down, that light come on. And that's how a lot of Christians pray. They just feel around. Oh, Lord, you are, oh, Jesus. I, Lord, oh, help me, Lord. You see, they just feeling around, praying in the night. And if you'll just take your Bible, get it out, and find scriptures that promise you what you need. Find prophecies that promise you what you need. Or ask the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, help me to pray. Help me to find scriptures and prophecies that promise me what I'm praying for, that promise me what I need. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. Woo! Boy, I felt the Holy Ghost right there. Amen. Now watch this. Notice. Ooh, glory. I just saw something. Notice here in Luke chapter 5. Let's pick it up in verse, verse, verse 15. And so much the more, there went a fame abroad of him. See, they hearing about something Jesus did, promised, and said. Amen. And great multitudes came together to do what? To hear and to be healed of their diseases. They came to do what? To hear. To hear what? How God loved them in Christ. To hear what? His ability and willingness to help them. Mm. See, they kept hearing that. Woo! And the healing manifested. Glory to God. Amen. I often tell people, if, if your faith is not working, amen, go into scriptures and look at how God loved you in Christ on the cross. Amen. Look, out, look on the cross where Jesus, he could have called for 12 legions of angels to get him off that cross. Matthew 26, 53, he denied the assistance of 12 legions of angels to help him off that cross so he could stay on that cross and provide salvation and healing to the sinner and, 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 and healing to the sick. Mm. I often say it like this. It was love that provided, woo, glory to God, a savior for the sinner. Woo, it was love that provided a healer for the sick. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Love required God to provide a savior for the sinner. And it required him to provide a healer for the sick. Mm. Look at Matthew 9. Look at verse 11 and 12. They was contending with Jesus because he was healing people on the Sabbath day and he was healing and receiving sinners. 
and they argue with him. Yo, yo, this man, he he keep company with publicans. And Jesus responded, it's not the righteous that need a savior. It's the unrighteous. It's not the well that need a healer, a physician. It's the sick. Whoa, glory be to God. Love required Jesus to provide a savior to the sinner, a healer for the sick. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> see, you got to keep looking at how he loved you in Christ on the cross, and you'll see what he did for you. You'll see what he provided for you. You'll see that he for you. Mm. Glory to God. God so loved the world that he gave. Love required him to give something. What? What did love require him to give? A savior. What did love require him to give? A healer. What did love require him to give? A redeemer. Oh, ho, ho. glory to God. Amen. Woo. See, this is how you're going to get your faith to work. Amen. By, by connecting it to how he loved you on the cross in Christ. That was the greatest demonstration of the power of God. Amen. When Jesus, he, he told, look, look what he told Pilate. Man, you got to hear this right here. Woo, glory. Y'all got your shouting shoes on. Amen. Glory to God. See, see this going to help you pray effectively. It's going to help you get results. Why? Because prayer is acknowledging God and how he loved me in Christ on the cross and his ability and willingness to help me. Mm. See, you got to see that he committed to help you. That's why Hebrews 10, 23, it says, hold fast to the profession of your faith. How? Without wavering. Why? Because he's faithful that promise. Faithful to his love. Faithful his, to his ability. Faithful to his willingness to use it on your behalf. Mm. Now watch this. Look at John chapter 10. Watch what Jesus told Pilate. John chapter 10. He said, therefore do my father love me because I lay down my life. I lay down my life that I may take it again. Watch this. No man can take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I got power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my Father. Whew. Glory to God in that same power. Amen. That Jesus demonstrated towards us on the cross. It's the same power that God used to save us. Mm. He was willing to use his power to lay down his life for us. Woo! And you mean to tell me he's stingy with it when it comes to healing and prosperity and delivering and answer to prayer? Oh, what make you think like that? That's how the devil messed up Adam and Eve. He got them to, 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 to suspect or question God's love and care for them. How God going to love you and he won't let you eat of that tree? How he going to love you and he know that's going to make you wise and it's good for food? See, he got them to question, to compromise God's love and care for them. Mm. Amen. Glory to God. Don't let him do you like that. Amen. I always go, ask the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, why my prayers are not getting answered? Amen. Why, why God ain't coming through for me? Whew. He'll show you he's your helper. Woo, glory to God. And sometimes, you know, it, it, he, he'll have to speak to people and people have to listen to him. And, 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 and that can be, you know, the enemy can be holding them up, challenging them. And you have to pray for them. Lord, I pray for the people that you have assigned to help me. Whatever is contending with them. Whatever that is distracting them. Whatever is keeping them from obeying you. 
I come against it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring them out from under that distraction. I bring them out from under the influence of doubt and unbelief. And I bring them up under the influence of the truth that you spoke to them and the Holy Spirit and the grace of God to help. See, pray, pray like that. Because God had to, had, to, had to get what he promised you through somebody. And they could be challenged. The enemy, you think he wants you to have what God promised you and it got to come through them? Man, he's going to do everything in the world to try to keep them, distract them. Whew. Glory to God. Jesus knew he needed Peter, amen, to proclaim the gospel. Amen. Especially to the Gentile, Peter preached the first sermon. Amen. Glory to God. In, in, in Acts 2, uh, verse 14. Amen. He he preached the first sermon. He he was the first one that went to the to the Samaritans and to the Gentiles in Acts chapter chapter uh, uh, chapter eight and in and in and, 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 and chapter ten. Amen. And the Lord, He knew that that Satan was going to try to challenge him and 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 and, and hinder the gospel from going to the world. He committed that to Peter. That was his assignment. And he knew Satan was, was going to try to challenge him and hinder him. So he prayed for him in Luke chapter 22. See, he is preventative, proactive prayer. Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you and to sift you as weak. But I have prayed for you that your faith don't fail. And when you are converted, Go strengthen your brother. Whew. So it didn't bother Jesus that Peter was going to deny him three times. Why? Because Jesus had confidence in his prayers. Whew. How are you going to pray for your children in the next moment? Hey Amen. Them old devils, I don't know what they're doing. Let me call home and check on them. Ain't no telling. They done tore the house up. It's summertime. They out of school. How are you going to pray for them and talk like that? You got to watch what you say after you pray. Mm. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this right here? Amen. No, I'm praying Isaiah 54, 13 through 17 over my children. All of my children are taught of the Lord. Great is their peace. They are established in righteousness. Amen. They are far from oppression, terror, and fear. It can't come near them. No weapon formed against my children shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against my children shall be condemned and proved to be wrong. Because I'm a servant of the Lord. My righteousness is of him. And this is my heritage. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. And then I'm watching what I say. I die, I pray. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody come up. Man, you, you know, your child, I saw your child over here. Look at them on Facebook. Look at what they saying. I said, praise the Lord. What I pray, God heard it and he's working. And I thank him. Woo, glory to God. I thank him. Woo, glory to God that Satan desires to have him, but he ain't going to get to have him. Why? Because I pray. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Y'all getting this tonight? Amen. Now notice, they came to hear. They came to hear how he loved them. Amen. And how he's willing to use his ability on their behalf. And they were healed. Hmm. See, see, we we hearing about we hearing what God promised. Amen. But we ain't hearing about the one who promised it. Mm. We ain't hearing enough about him. See, we know the scripture. Watch this. We in John. Watch this. John chapter five. Chapter five. Woo! Man, y'all pulling tonight, man. I feel your faith. You got that rope tied around me. Pull it. Hallelujah. Keep pulling with me. Keep believing with me. Keep standing with me. Glory to God. The Lord, he finna break out on us tonight. Whew. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look that with me to John chapter 5. Look at verse 39. He says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. 
And they are they that testify of me, but you won't come to me. See, they were stopping up at the scriptures and not going to the person that the scriptures talk about. Mm. So many Christians do that. They stop up at the scriptures, the promises, and they don't let the scriptures take them to the person that promised it. Mm. Woo! Glory to God. I'm feeling this in my spirit, y'all. Amen. It was love that drew that promise out of him. It was love that drew that healing out of him. It was love that drew that Savior out of him. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Don't stop up at the scriptures. Let the scriptures tell you how the person of God loved you in Christ on the cross. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let the scriptures take you to the person who loved you, who promised this because of his love for you. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> glory be to God. That was revelation right there. Now, so, so, so now notice here in Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one. Let me show you the greatest act of God's power. And you, you will see from this that he's willing to use it on your behalf. And see, whatever God's ready to do, that's what he's willing to do. That's what he's wanting to do. Whatever he's willing to do, that's what he's ready to do and wanting to do. Oh, glory to God. Well, what's stopping him? We ain't heard enough. See, we got to hear till we see how he loved us in Christ on the cross. When you see how he loved you in Christ on the cross, woo, glory to God. Man, your doubts will leave you. Your doubts will have doubts. Your questions will have questions. When you see how he loved you on the cross in Christ, you're going to see that he's committed to your good. And ain't nothing can uncommit him. Hmm. Glory to God. Now watch this. Notice in Ephesians chapter 1. Let's pick it up in verse, uh, verse 19. Notice verse 19. Well, let's pick it up in verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the what? The exceeding greatness. Whew. Ooh, this is the most powerful of his power. This, this is the, 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 the greatest aspect of his power, the greatest attribute of his power, the greatest measure and degree of his power. It's the greatness of his power. Amen. Notice, notice the greatness of his power towards who? Us, us, us. God's ability is towards us. Oh, glory to God. It's always towards us. It's always for our benefit. <laughs> glory to God. The exceeding greatness of his power is towards us. Whew. Who believe? Mm. Who believe what? That he can do anything? No. Who believe what? Nothing too hard for him? No. Uh-uh. Who believe what? Amen. The seed and great of his power towards us who believe. Who believe. Who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he used when he raised Christ from the dead. Oh, on that cross. Oh, will you believe that? Oh, glory to God. Man, nothing can stop your prayers from getting answered. Amen. The greatest demonstration of his power when he put Jesus on that cross for you. Mm, that was his commitment to your good. He was saying to us, I ain't withhold him. I'd rather have a relationship with you than one with him. 
That's how much I love you. I denied a relationship with him. I forsook him so I wouldn't forsake you. Whew. Woo! Glory to God. Are you seeing this today? Oh, glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. He jealous over you. He don't want no sickness having you, no poverty, no worry, no fear, no oppression, no anxiety. He don't want nothing having you but him. Mm. In the name of Jesus, sickness and disease, you spirit of infirmity, depart from these bodies right now. Worry, fear, anxiety, depression, leave right now. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, be free where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Whom the Lord set free is free indeed. Be free. Be loosed. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. Don't accept no failure. Don't accept no loss. Don't accept no defeat. Mm. Jesus took that for you. You wouldn't pay for something twice. It's already been paid for. Whew. You got the receipt. Whew. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So you're praying. Amen. Glory to God. Effectively. Why? Because you're acknowledging the Holy Spirit as your helper in prayer. Amen. You're praying effectively. Amen. Glory to God. Because you're finding scriptures and prophecies that promise you what you need. And you're praying effectively because you're exercising faith, confidence in how he loved you in Christ on the cross and him willing to use his ability on your behalf. Amen. That's where your faith going to come from. Hearing how he loved you in Christ on the cross. Hearing how he's willing to use his ability on your behalf. Hearing that he's for you. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. Well, what are we going to do about the sin problem? That, 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 that's, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do about it. Amen. We're going to let love. We're going to let love rule over that. Let me show you how. Some of you, 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 you know, you, it seems like you can't stop that. You just keep going in that. Let's put some brakes on that. Amen. Let's, let's get in spoused to one husband. Mm, let's not date him. Let's marry him. This is how we do it. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. Look at verse 14 and 15. For the love of Christ, ooh, how he loved me on that cross when he took away my sins, when he suffered, bled, and died, paid sin's penalty for me, the penalty of death, all them consequences, glory to God. He took them all, paid them for me. That love, that love, that love, how he loved me on that cross, ooh, what does it do? It constrains me. Mm. I don't want to hurt you no more, Jesus. I'm through hurting you. Mm. I'm through inflicting pain on you. I'm through subjecting you to this kind of stuff. Mm. This love that you love me with on that cross is constraining me. Mm. It's keeping me from dishonoring you. It's keeping me from hurting you. Mm. I was in prison with this with this brother named Johnny Ray. And boy, Johnny Ray would steal anything from everybody. Man, they put him, every time they put him in a cell with somebody, they throw him out because he done stole something from them. So they put Johnny Ray in there with me. And, uh, you know, I had plenty of Zuzu, Wham Wham, Commissary. You know, toiletries, all of that. Amen. And I just laid them all out on the table in the bed. And so when they put him in there, I said, Johnny Ray, let me tell you, everything in here, 
It's both for ours. You don't have to ask for nothing. Freely I, I receive, freely I give. You in here with me? We're partners together in this endeavor. He looked at me and said, man, what are you trying to do? Because you know when you try to get somebody something in prison, they always think you're trying to violate them. And I said, man, it ain't no funny stuff. You know I'm saved, man. Love Jesus. And he said, well, why are you giving me that? I said, man, because I love you, man. And he said, you remind me of my mama. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, you know, I'll steal from anybody. He said, but there's one person that I wouldn't steal from. I said, who? He said, my mama. I said, what made your mama different from everybody else? Why you wouldn't violate her, steal from her? What prevented you? What constrained you from violating her, hurting her? He said, man, mama loved me. Mama, there, she'd be there for me with nobody else. Man, I can't hurt mama. She'd be having money in her pocketbook, sitting on the table. And i walk through the house and see it. i leave the house. Because my love for my mama keep me from violating her. Man, I got a revelation. My love for Jesus and how he loved me on that cross, what he did for me when he took my sins away, it keep me from hurting him. Mm. See, you look at how, how you going to not have fun, what it's going to do for you. Just look at how it's going to hurt him. And you won't do that. You won't do it no more. Because you'll see that it hurt him. Glory to God. For the love of Christ constraineth me. Why? Because I've thus judged that if one died for all, all were dead. And he died for all so that we who live should no longer live for and to ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Whew. Glory to God. See, this love will teach you how to deny yourself. Mm. Glory to God. It'll teach you how to take up your cross, follow him. Amen. And see, he wants you to reproduce this love. Give this same love that he gave you on the cross. He want to give, he wants you to give it to others. John chapter thir uh, chapter 13, uh, 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 verse, verse uh, 33, 34 and 35. John 13, 34, 35. John 15. Verse 9 and 10, Jesus said, continue in my love, just as I continued in the Father's love. John 13, verse 34, 35, he said, by this love that you demonstrate toward people, they go, no, you my disciples. Not by how many scriptures you know what church you go to, but by this love. Mm. How Jesus did us on the cross, that's how we doing people who do us wrong. Woo! We ain't digging up people evil. That's ungodly. Proverbs 16, 27. An ungodly man dig up evil. An ungodly person remember wrong. An ungodly person take account of the wrong done to it. But love, mm, it don't pay no attention to a suffered wrong. Whew. Woo! Glory! And see, when you live in that, you live in Jesus and you get all your prayers answered. <laughs> 1 John 3, verse 22, amen, and, 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 and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandment. What's his commandment? Love. Pay people back what I paid you back on the cross. Pay that back to people who do you wrong. We keep his commandment and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Praise God. I pray that you this word ministered to you tonight. I know it did me. It fed my spirit, fed my faith. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity to sow and give in this ministry to demonstrate and to express your love for this ministry. Amen. This work that we're doing. Amen. At the school in the Spring Valley apartment complex where we're on to go conveying, taking this love, this cross to the masses. Amen. Will you strengthen our endeavors, our hands, our arms, our legs? Will you give the Lord an outreach to these people? Amen. Glory to God. And that's what giving does. It's an expression of your love. God so loved the world that he gave. Whew. The information to express your love, amen, is on the screen right there. You can do it, PayPal, 
Givelify, Cash App, Mail It In, Square. Glory to God. Amen. See, love has to have an outlet. Amen. And giving is the outlet, the expression of your love. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Ask yourself, is what I'm giving an adequate expression of my love for what the Lord did for me on that cross? Amen. Help me, Lord Jesus. Give me seed to sow. While I'm sowing my seed, give me bread for my food. And multiply this seed that I'm sowing tonight and increase me in the fruits of my righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. We appreciate all of you. Amen. Your love, your support of the ministry. Amen. Glory to God. We're partners together in this endeavor. Please refer to our Facebook page. Look at all the events and services that are coming up at the ministry. Be prayerful with us. Amen, as we're on the go. Amen, glory to God, conveying Jesus Christ and his love to this world, giving him a voice in this next generation through the academy. Amen, and taking this gospel, this means and ways of escape from all satanic and oppression and affliction to the masses and to the world. Amen, glory to God. Like I said, we appreciate you and love you so much, and it's our prayer that God's richest and best be yours.